Spring for brunch, everyone. Princess DeBerry here, we're at Disney Springs today. Apparently it's inclement weather, but the one thing that will never stop a Floridian from brunching is the rain. And new food. Yes, that was your number one choice in foodie infotainment. We're back at Summer House because it's time to do brunch. Remember cheese vegan? I'm not. Let's go chow down. Be sure to brunch and mimosa. Here's the girl. Mimosa. Mimosa is not on the menu, but here it is. They use their Juliana Prosecco, which is vegan and sustainably made. So I'm super excited for that. Cheers to Mimosa. They do not, I repeat, do not have mimosas on the menu. But if you are one of those mimosa loving avocado toast eating millennials, just ask for one. Oh, that's divine. Those are the spritz style version of this, and I definitely think I want to try that next because this is a beautiful, bright Prosecco, and there's a little too much orange juice ratio. It's not my jam, but I still think it's really tasty. I'm gonna give it a four out of five sparkling wines. It is sparkling, and the orange juice has pulp in it, so it really tastes fresh. I suppose you really can't have brunch without mimosa. It's like um, a staple, if you will. Staple, staple is the word I'm looking for. Institution? No. Staple. Yeah, staple. But pulp, though. It's gonna be some weird California invention. Pulp and orange juice? Ooh, the ratio's good. Orange juice for color. That's exactly how we like our, our mimosas. I would say a good 3.75 out of 5. Well, it's not in the 4 range. Orange juice is like the basic ready of mimosas. But we'll take it. So then we have a pineapple with a tisk because apparently this place is screaming my name. Pineapple and everything I will take. I wonder what the twist is. Is every time I drink one of these, a millennial gets a house? Ooh. But like citrusy, but with the pineapple, a little bite. Kind of like that. It's tequila in the morning. It'll drive you. It's a slogan or something. Four out of five plus. So freaking excited for this a spicy avocado. Grilled, it's like whole pieces of avocado right here. I can't tell if they took the skin off. It looks like the skin is in, but you don't even need the knife. You can just fork it. It is smelling like fire and goodness. Wow, that is a journey. Char is incredible. I feel like I just had like a, a cream or a mousse or something. Not an avocado. This this takes avocado to the next level. It's supposed to be spicy. It's not. It's like a one and a half out of ten on the heat scale. It's the char that really makes this. I am obsessed with this. Forget avocado toast. Just eat the avocado. This is a five out of five. This is a princess of these item. This is thankfully available during breakfast and lunch dinner. So pick it up. You're gonna want it. There are times in my life where I'm glad when we do these videos in the format that the princess goes first. I would have really attempted to eat this entire thing, skin and all, not realizing that wasn't part of what I was supposed to be eating. If there's any of you very, very strange, I eat the skin off my avocado, I need you to comment and tell me why you do that. I give you a spoon in this, which is probably better than trying to eat with a fork. I'll just scoop, a little bilateral cut there, there we go. I am an avocado surgeon. Ooh. Why does this feel like how avocado is supposed to be? It's almost like avocado pudding. Seasoned, like a savory pudding. It's definitely a starter. My engines are revved, my stomach is rumbling. I want more of this in my tummy. I would give this, honestly, 4.75 out of 5 plus, only because there's not more of it. I'm glad we came back for brunch because they have a jalapeno cornbread on the menu. 
I love cornbread, and most of all, I love the jalapeno cornbread from House of Blue, which is like two doors down. That almost feels like shots fired in the foodie wars, and, and no other wars, obviously. Get your own nice little miniature pot of jalapeno cornbread. It is hot, so watch your fingies. Just cut a little slice. As soon as it's actually gonna work, it's just gonna be a mess. Ooh. Sort of works. Seal the cornbread in there. The well, cornbread, well, the jalapeno. There's a lot of jalapeno in there, a lot more than I expected. I thought it was gonna be jalapeno light, but there are lots of little chopped pieces, little corn bits in there. It's like the princess will make it home. Get a little douse of that honey butter. I'm excited for this. Something got a kick to it. Say it's Normal jalapeno spice, it's got 3 out of 10 on the spice scale. It comes off more of like a cornbread casserole, less of like a corn cornbread. It's really moist, but not in a bad way, it just it doesn't hold together, doesn't eat like bread. It eats like, like a normal casserole. Now, it's cornbread, it's spicy. Ooh. Maybe it's creeping up a little bit. I still have that rating to 5 out of 10 on the spice scale. It's good cornbread. Does it hold a candle to the House of Blues cornbread? That's a high bar, and I would say no, but still a very good entry. Four out of five plus. You cannot get more California than a breakfast burrito. Yes, we may not have invented the breakfast burrito, but we certainly made it popular. And the last time that I took Bear to breakfast in LA, I actually got a tofu scramble breakfast burrito. It was spicy. And I do feel like every breakfast burrito needs a taco sauce or burrito sauce or some sort of sauce. So I am missing a sauce, but maybe the tofu scramble will need a sauce. And we have like copious amounts of spinach too, so cheers. I've had a lot of burritos in my life, breakfast burritos in my life. This is, this is a thought. This is half of a burrito. So, usually when you do a breakfast burrito, you need like a rice or a hash brown or something like crunchy to give it like body and wholeness and substance. So this has all of the components that a breakfast burrito needs minus the fat. So it's very like soft and chewy. It has avocado in it too, so it just kind of helps with that softness and that chewiness. And it needs, it just needs something like crunchy, hard, like a rice or something in there, and then I think it'll be perfect. I like the idea, I just don't think it's fully where it should be in the world of breakfast burritos. So I'm gonna give this one a 2.75 out of five burritos. And I have a lot of things here that I really like, so I don't know, I'm not mad at the fact that this one is the best, even though I was the most excited for this one. Alrighty, that's a nice filled, very green looking burrito. It's given very like the same I am green eggs and ham, but infinitely better than the Grinch Records. Yes, I'm still throwing shade at the Grinch Records. Uh, it's a lot of spinach. I love spinach, but for some people, that might be a great honking bit. I am on board with the sort of like tofu in it, the spinach, and the avocado, but it's given more warm breakfast salad wrap than burrito. I'm not getting burrito from that. Is it a tortilla? I don't know if that makes it a burrito automatically, but it shows more of a wrap and less of a burrito. The burrito piece is the piece I'm missing. I'm missing the, the culture. I'll give it three out of five paws. I don't know if it's over again. This is an open up half of this burrito. This is all spinach, and then this is the scramble. So these ratios definitely need to be revisited because that's, that's just far too much. Unless you like spinach like that, which I don't. 
So my burrito comes with this cute little side salad here. This salad is giving me connections vibes minus the um, olives. And you know, this isn't the only thing that's giving me Epcot vibes because the same architectural and design company that did Epcot Center designed this restaurant. So we got some Epcot influences in here even though this is a Californian restaurant. Let's try the salad to see if it tosses my salad. It is properly dressed. It's not super shredded like the salad I had for dinner. Slightly dressed. Just a salad. I really wish I would have had like some rice or something else on the side so I could put my burrito together a little bit more. Apparently there's pico in the burrito too. I'm not tasting that. I feel like I taste more pico on top of my salad than I do in the burrito. So I'm gonna give this salad also like a 2.5 out of 5 salads. But like medium tosses my salad. Like maybe like a half toss. Like not a satisfactory tossing. This bowl of salad this week. Bowl of sad salad. Even though the salad we had earlier this week was actually pretty good. This salad does need, need some tossing. Actually, there's a lot of the good stuff, but it's on the bottom. The dressing works. It's dressed. There's leaves. There are things there that technically make it a salad. It's just your average side salad. Two and a half out of five. So here we have the fluffy buttermilk pancakes, and I stress on the fluffy part. It's like princess portion and bear portion. This is definitely a bear portion of pancakes. I am happy with the service area of said pancakes. And because of this beautiful service area, it's getting a four, not a dip. I could have, but I can't spell. I can't spell perfectly fine. Come over here and just get into this mountain of syrup and powdered sugar. I'm not usually a powdered sugar person. Uh, I am the most boring breakfast person in the world. I like oatmeal and I like my pancakes plain. I don't want butter on them. I don't want fruit in them. No chocolate chips. No funfetti. None of that stuff. Just give me plain pancakes. The fluffier the better. Are these fluffy? That is up for debate. Not the thickest pancake I've ever eaten, but I love the texture. It's like nice and crispy on the edges and it's got that soft inside without burning any piece of it. Powdered sugar doesn't offend me. It's a nice, solid buttermilk pancake. It's punched above its weight. Honestly, they do have like a fruit version, a blueberry version. If you want to go that route, they also have, you know, the inferior waffles. Who wants to eat those? But it's given, it's given pancake. 3.75 out of 5. This is the Aperol Spritz. This is one of two vegan spritzes that you can get. The orange and the grapefruit. I went with the orange since I already have the mimosa. It definitely tastes like a spritz. I'm not mad at it. I think it's a really great, like, breakfast drink that you could have well I mean you could have it for breakfast or lunch dinner but I think it's good to have with most of the things that you could get here as far as like a vegetable or salad perspective I like it I'm gonna give it a 3.75 out of that spritzes this looks like Disney adult candy for breakfast the color on this thing it's like a melted starburst like talk about sunrise in a cup Spritz is a verb, noun, verb. It's doing something. It's still spritzy. Spritzy is what I'm getting from it. It's really sharp, the orange. You definitely get citrus first, and then it's like the little miniature bubbles in the back end. It's fine. I only got to order it, but it, it fits well with brunch. It fits the aesthetic, if you will. I would give it three and a half out of five. Yes, we got cookies. I got vegan snickerdoodle. Bear and I thought we were gonna have to leave this place, do our outro, and then come back in at the end of this video and go to the cookie bar and get these cookies. 
but no, our server is like, you want cookie? We bring you cookie. And since the cookie has been placed, at least three other people have come up to us and said how much they love the vegan cookie. And they go, oh, you know, it's vegan, right? Yeah, it's vegan. The fact that all of these people love these non-vegans are telling me how much they love the vegan cookie has got me like super stoked. Plus I love snickerdoodles, so yeah. This is like childhood memory. Oh my gosh, it's soft to cut through. Oh. Look, it just, it just, it's just, it just falls apart. It's just chewy and amazing, and I'm so excited. Mm. If a churro were in cookie form, it would be this snickerdoodle. This is the stuff that dreams are made of. This is, this is like next worldly. This is up there with the avocado that I had here. And um, what's that other? Oh, the artichoke. I think the snickerdoodle, the avocado, and the artichoke are my favorite things here at this restaurant. And I highly encourage you, whether you're vegan or not, to try this cookie. It's a five out of five. It is a princess of these items. If you love cinnamon, sugar, snickerdoodle, or churro, try this cookie. And many of you probably wondered the same that I wondered when they first announced this restaurant to have a cookie bar. It's like, why we have a cookie bar when we have Gideon's right down the walkway? Now, one thing Gideon doesn't have is a vegan cookie, which is why we've never been to Gideon's. They offer nothing vegan except for coffee. They have coffee here too. Get your cookie and your coffee. Yeah. This thing is just for, I mean, you don't want to get your nails dirty, but you don't need the knife for the cookie. I'm not sure how they manage that, but I'm, I've never been a big sticker to the person because I always felt you're too hard. But when they're too soft, they fall apart. It's like the perfect consistency. It doesn't fall apart until it's in your mouth, which is how the cookie should be. That is an amazing cookie. I was expecting, you know, like a little cute box of cookies, not a huge, massive, delicious, and impressive vegan cookie. Do that four and a half out of five claws. If I didn't have my own cookie, I would steal this from the printer. So here we have the apple oatmeal cookie. Now they had an apple scotchy, which is like a hazel butternut cream with uh, butterscotch. butterscotch chips in addition to oatmeal. Uh, this one is almost like granola-y looking, but equally is like held together, but still very soft. The oatmeal and the apple gives it a nice, like balanced sweetness without like the earthiness of the oatmeal. A little bit of the chewy side, but the consistency is from like how the cookie holds together. It's perfect. I absolutely love it. Would I have loved oatmeal raisin more? Yes, but I'm an oatmeal raisin zealot. Okay, oatmeal raisin cookies do not last in our house. I would give it four out of five plus. Summer house on the lake is going to be a competitive Disney Springs brunch. I think breakfast, lunch, dinner, brunch, dunch, 70s, 70s, 11s, Second dinner, lunch. supper, good for any of those things. Yeah, so their brunch runs till three, so you don't have to roll out of bed at the crack of dawn to enjoy brunch here, which is great. Makes me want to try Haleo brunch next though. We've been tossing around Haleo brunch for a while. I definitely want to do that. We've done, we haven't done um, Morgan Enzo's brunch here. We've only done City Works and, and House, of Blues. House of Blues. And I feel like there was another one that I'm forgetting. You guys tell us which one we forgot in the comments. So which did you like better, dinner or brunch? On the spot, uh, yes. See, my yeah. burrito, I really wanted to like my burrito, so I wanted to say breakfast. But the thing that I love the most today was a dinner item, and I loved my salad, and they have so many options. So I'm gonna go with dinner. I'm thinking that dinner is the better value. Brunch is good, don't get me wrong, but we like dinner more. 
But as a general one choice in food entertainment, those are the things that we're going to come here to find out for you. So if there's anything else you'd like to see us do in the comments, there's always going to be a place to find us. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and Saturday. Good we'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if you don't comment, Bear might just eat all the cookies because he's a cookie monster. Big one. I'm moving to a winter house and I'm never coming back. But you heard the girl. <laughs>